Hello, hello. All right, I'm back. I'm not a consistent poster. I post when I can, um, when I have something to say. And I definitely have something to say about the A7 IV and the X-H2S. Um, if you can't tell by the title of the video, that's the comparison for today. Um, I know there are a lot of tests out there, or there's definitely tests out there on YouTube. Um, and there's gonna be more and more tests on YouTube. So managing expectations, what you're gonna get from me is you're not gonna get charts, you're not gonna get um, measurements, you're not gonna get someone running at the camera. I'm not gonna run for this test. I'm, I'm just not. And uh, I'll run if I'm chased. I like to bike. Biking's much better for me. You're not gonna get like, you know, pointing at sheets of paper and all that stuff and going to the edges of the lenses. You're gonna get what another reviewer referred to as a gorilla testing. And that's my testing. My testing is use case testing. Um, for the record, I used to get paid to test devices for a living for a certain company um, back in the day. And I did have criteria for that testing. There were things they wanted to see. Um, and there were measurements. And, but there was also the subjective side, right? Um, not everybody picks something based on, you know, a result of a 1.85 versus a 1.93 you know, or 2.04 whatever. So today is the comparison between these two bodies. Um, a quick history or quick overview of my history as I was a Nikon shooter as a starter, went to mirrorless via Fuji for years, like seven, eight years. Um, have, we'll always have a Fuji body. This is being shot on an X100V and tried a lot of cameras. Tried, um, uh, I think it was like a, it was a D500. My dog is not happy with someone but I'm not stopping. And the D500 autofocus was like money. I mean, it was like, it was amazing, but it was just big, it was clunky. And again, it was not mirrorless. And so I was trying to stay mirrorless. And if I could stay with one um, manufacturer, you know, with both bodies, color consistency goes a long way. So long story short, I left Fuji as my main body. We'll always have a, a small carry around Fuji, but I left Fuji for initially Nikon, Z body, Z50 and the uh, Z62, and I left Nikon because I wanted more consistent eye detect autofocus with my pets and with my boys, and not exactly in that order. Um, I wanted the ability to capture an eyeball without having to work so hard. Um, my boys are never still, my pets are never, never still. So sitting at a coffee shop one day, someone had asked me if I tried the, the Sony a7 IV, because we were talking about, you know, what do you shoot? They saw my camera bag. I'm like, we talked about it. It's like, I'm not a pro. I just like shooting around the neighborhood, travel, vacation, family events, stuff like that. And he said, have you tried the A7 IV? I said, I don't really, I'm not a big Sony person. I wasn't trying to, you know, make anyone upset. And I, he's like, well, have you ever tried it? I was like, well, I've tried the A7 III, tried the A6400, the A6600, and I just never vibed with any of those. The A7 III autofocus was pretty good, but it, I mean, it wasn't like, it didn't blow away the Z62, in my opinion. So he said, you have to try the A7 IV. You absolutely have to try the A7 IV. And I was like, well, what about the colors? And he says, it's the best colors I've ever seen from Sony. Um, and to cut to the chase, he was absolutely right. It, best colors I've ever seen, subjectively, my opinion, best colors I've ever seen from a Fuji body. I'm sorry, ever seen from a Sony body. The colors from the A7 IV is like, Sony went out and said, we're gonna take landscape, outdoor, floral, greenery colors from Nikon, check. And we're gonna take skin tones, the rosy, warm cheeks from Canon, check. That's gonna make a lot of people happy. Um, and I think this camera will make a lot of people very, it's made me happy. I've been shooting this as my main body for months and months and months vacation, travel, kids, family events, everything. And I've been extremely satisfied with every single thing that came out of this camera and the, um, the autofocus that goes along with it. So why is this sitting here? I mean, it's sitting here because I had the X-H1 and I loved it, loved it. And it said that this is the best autofocus that has ever existed in a Fuji body. Um, that means I have to try it. Absolutely have to try it. So where are we at? Um, 
When I refer to autofocus, it's the ability to consistently grab an eye and focus. Um, consistency, consistently and reliably grab an eye and focus when I take a picture of my family or pets. Um, I'm not doing master or professional portraits or anything like that, but there's something about that shot grabbing the eye is what it is. My experience with the Sony is it is witchcraft level. I detect an autofocus. It's amazing. It's amazing with the 24 to 105. I don't know where this guy can go. Lens, it's amazing with the 52.5 lens. And side note, the 52.5, badass lens. In my opinion, better than the 55 1.8 Zeiss. And lens tip, I think, has studied or tested the resolution and says that this is a sharper lens. Your mileage may vary, but I have owned both, and this is a better lens. Leave the comments below if you disagree. Um, so, between these two, I will say witchcraft level autofocus as far as grabbing an eye, this is 95% of this. Did not expect that. I expected 80% of this. I got 95. We can see where this is going. Love ya, but 95? And the colors, come on. Um, one thing I want to talk about with both of these cameras, if you've never shot with extremely accurate and sticky eye auto detect, it completely changes the way you shoot. Um, historically, me taking pictures of my kids, he's sitting on the couch, he's making cookies um, with my wife, whatever, it's frame the shot and then move the focus point to the eye. Frame the shot, move the focus point to the eye, right? When there's focus and recompose, that works for things that are still for me. Focus and recompose is not happening with my kids. They, I mean, it'd be like focus and focus and focus and focus and recompose, and then on and on over again. What these cameras do is they flip the process. It's um, grab the eye and compose. You know, it's not compose, grab the eye. It's I'm back button focus with all my cameras. And when this is in a mode to, to grab eyes, it's literally, it grabs the eye immediately. You hold focus. It's got the eye, you can sit there and dance around and do whatever you want. It's, you can see the green dot staying on there. So it's grab the eye, compose, grab the eye, compose. Changes the way you shoot. Way easier, way easier. And they both are absolutely amazing in this regard. So you can't go wrong with either of these. Again, um, we're talking the Fuji is 95% of witchcraft. We'll leave it at that. So um, what ne what's next? Um, pet eye auto detection, if it matters. If these are excellent when it comes to human eye detect and autofocus, these are both very, very good when it comes to pets. Um, caveat, I'm not talking about your dog doing flips, catching frisbees. I'm talking about the dog sitting out with the family, playing in the backyard, maybe running up to you or running around. But I, I have found they're both over 70%, consistently over 70% um, in getting a good eye or good focus of the face of pets. So they're both winners, honestly, you know. So next I will talk about colors. Um, that's not, um, you know, controversial at all. So we'll go there. Colors, colors. Iced tea, iced tea. Obviously highly subjective. Um, nothing I say today should change your mind as far as if you love Sony, if you love Fuji, nothing I say is, is scientific. It truly isn't. It's what I've seen from these bodies and what I've seen from the bodies are absolutely stunning colors from both. So we can just stop now, right? Um, what should you expect, honestly? Again, what you should expect is amazing landscape colors. I'm gonna, oh, whoa, wait a minute. I've done this video so many times. My kids interrupt, kids have interrupted me. The, the dogs have interrupted me. This thing doesn't wanna record more than 15 minutes and overheats and it's never hit me that I think I like the landscape colors from the Sony more than the Fuji. They're really freaking good. They're really good. Like I said, they're almost like Nikon 
colors when it comes to landscape, outdoors, flowers. Ooh, yeah. Skin tones, I'm getting the yellow. I'm getting rosiness to the cheeks that I don't see in person and I don't get with the Fuji. So it's the best colors I've ever seen from any Sony that I've used. You know, I've used like, th I've tried three bodies. This is my fourth and the photographer that day at the coffee shop who said this was a witchcraft level autofocus with the best Sony colors he's ever seen from Sony. He's right. The dude's a pro. So there you go. That's the Sony side. The colors from the Fuji, I love them. They're Fuji colors. They have the film simulations. Um, one thing I've found is for skin tones, there's Pro Neg Standard. That's amazing. There's regular standard Provia, which is like just your standard profile. It looks good. You know, the colors are accurate. I feel like they're consistent. But a lot of times I will switch over and I'll try the Pro Neg Standard and they look really good. It kind of like chills out the skin tones, if that makes a difference. So. I'm honestly not gonna spend a lot of time on colors. It's like the most subjective thing ever. They both are amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it, colors. All right, let's move on. Especially because this guy wants to be all overheady and everything. Um, ISO noise comparison. This is where it gets interesting. This should be the hands down clear winner when it comes to ISO noise. It's full frame. This is a crop sensor body. It's not that simple. And there is a review out there that shows a room being filmed. And I think they're not even the same ISO. They're adjusting for this or whatever. There were some comments and the comments were not appreciated. I tried to comment, they weren't appreciated. It's like, dude, we're just trying to have a conversation here. We're not trying to question your work, but whatever. I mean, people are gonna question this. You know, every, you know, what do they say? Opinions are like, uh, well, everybody's got them. So what I found in testing ISO noise let me just stop for a minute. When I say what I'm looking for, what I'm testing for in ISO noise is how much noise, like when I go and shoot at 3,200 ISO, 6,400, um, 10,000, what am I seeing in the subject? What am I seeing non-subject when it comes to noise? That's what I'm testing here. The testing was done in good light, in medium light, in a, a downstairs room where my boys play video games and a lot of times images just turn out orange. There's outdoor light coming in, there's um, just bulbs, fluorescent bulbs or whatever, and it's like the cameras, consistently, a lot of cameras, the Sony's really bad at it, don't know what to do, so they just make the subject orange. Um, I have a, a, an orange joke, but we won't go there. Um, but as far as the ISO noise, I thought the Sony would win, and in my opinion, it didn't. And when I say that, what I found is, especially at images at 6,400, 10,000, um, I liked the noise better from the Fuji. I took some shots of my sons in that room, ISO 5,000, ISO 6,400. And then I did like massive level zooming, like more zooming than anyone should do. It's like, there's a double tap, which is your standard zoom. My phone is here, if you're wondering what I'm pointing at. And then there's like the zoom, let's zoom and zoom and zoom, right? And like, none of us need to be doing that. At standard zooms, like double tap zooms, and just looking at the image, these things are good. Like 6,400, you're gonna have a good image. I don't wanna say you're gonna have a great image at 10,000, but I don't know that I wouldn't use that image. Maybe, you know, it's black and white, you know? But what I found when zooming, because remember I'm looking for the noise, I'm looking to see what it looks like, the structure of the noise, is the noise from the Sony was consistently more electric, more hyper. I thought it had more colors in it, if that makes sense. It was just an energetic, vibrant, or just hyper noise. Um, it was not relaxing noise at all. And this is highly subjective, but it's the freaking noise that I looked at on the iPad, on the phone, zooming in. The noise from the Fuji shocked me. It was a borderline grain noise. Now I'm not gonna BS you and say that ISO 10,000 is grain. Like, no, I mean, I don't think so. But it was a more grainy, non-colorful, non-electric noise. That's what I found. And again, I shot in decent lighting. I shot in low lighting, medium lighting. 
And I even, when my kids were asleep one night, sat there and taught, took some pictures, basically in the dark. Um, Ibis is nice. I wasn't really worried about, you know, getting super sharp images as much as I was about finding the noise. And so, scientific, not scientific, I could be dead wrong, is what it is. I like the noise structure from the Fuji better. There you go. So, test be damned or science be damned. What's next? Ergonomics. Um, this may shock some people. I mean, this is Fuji, right? This is a Fuji comfortable X-H1 body. Um, and I should caveat this, that I've been using this for months and this for a few weeks. But in my opinion, the Sony wins the ergonomics. It feels great in the hands. This 52.5, it feels like I'm not holding anything. It's so light, but not only is it light, Ergonomics to me are how easy something is to use, how fluid it is, how hard you don't have to work to use something. Things just make sense. You know, everything's aligned where it should be. And damn, like they truly are. And you can, you can map buttons, but when I use this camera up here, I've mapped my focus mode so I can go from, I'm looking for people to I'm looking for objects. Down here, the okay button is I'm actually looking for people and turning on the detect because I might, have it and look for things, but I actually don't want it to grab a person so I can turn that off and on. This button, the trash button, is cycles between it's looking for a human, an animal, or a bird. And you can turn those off. You can just say, I'm not gonna look for birds. So it would, look, it would cycle through human, animal, human, animal. Um, with the Nikons, I found that I often had to go into the eye menu or the function menu or whatever it is, that little menu where all the stuff is. Once I get this going, I never, and it's both bodies so far, I never have to go into that menu. And I felt like with the, like the Z50 and the Z62, I was like, boom, ting, 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 this. But I mean, my exposure lock, my exposure compensation, uh, my focus modes, my timer, like this wins the ergonomics battle. To me, it's an easier camera to use. Um, let's talk about the Fuji for a second. It's kind of, I don't have the 33, I, like the comparison I made was between this 50 and the 33 1.4, and then I compared the 16 to 55 with the 24 1 5. It is what it is. But the main tests were done using a 52.5 up against the Fuji with a 33 1.4. You know, nifty 50 kind of test. Ergonomics on the Fuji. Um, I'm seeing that there's something here that Fuji users have wanted for a long time. Begging, begging for a uh, PASM dial. This guy, it's here, Fuji users rejoice. It's actually called the MASP, MASP dial. So I don't know if they're gonna like it as much, being referred to as the MASP dial. Is what it is, I don't care. Um, it works well, it's got a little lock, it's got a click. I've actually returned Fuji bodies, I won't say which model. They went cheap on this little clicking thing on, this, on a certain model of Fuji. And it sounded like a little tin toy, tink, 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 tink. I was like, nah, I'm paying too much money for that. But anyway, I digress. The ergonomics of this are great. Um, I love the fact that the D-pad is back. I've got a, you know, a joystick here. I've got my Q menu here, my AL lock. And I do, I'm an on, off, not press and hold, A lock type of person. But I've, st I've started doing that less and done, doing more with exposure compensation. But the D-pad is awesome. The beauty of this, everything can be mapped as well. So not only can I map my D-pad up, down, so there's my um, like uh, metering, there's my film simulations. I don't know if you can see any of this, but I'm gonna do this anyway. I've got my shutter type here. I've got my grain effect, and then I can swipe for a self-timer. I can create a timer right there. Swipe down, and I've got animal detect. Swipe left, I've got performance. And let's go back to just good old normal performance. So ergonomics of the Fuji are great. They're really good. There are these top buttons, and that's the ISO, the white balance, and this. And there is another blogger that kind of cracks jokes at this button. And he's right, he's right. I don't, I don't know what Fuji was thinking. The only thing, reason, or the only way I think I would use that button is I would not bring my finger back here. I would use my thumb either like this or like this. I have mapped that to white balance. I rarely use or change white balance. 
The front one is ISO. This one is, oh, I've mapped this one to face auto detect. So now it's off. So technically it says white balance. I put white balance on the bottom and my face auto detect on and off is set there. So both are great, but for me, Sony was an easier to use. Even if I think I had this and use this for a few more months, I just know that I've used a lot of cameras and where things are and how I use them is top notch with Sony. So the Sony wins for me the ergonomics battle. So you may be asking, um, which one am I keeping? Um, I'm keeping the Fuji. Um, I love the Sony. I'm going to put it up for sale. Got a ton of lenses that I need to sell. They're going to be listed on Reddit Photo Market. If any of you are interested, I ship UPS FedEx insured. It was a hard decision. It truly was. Again, you can't go wrong with either of these cameras. I'm a Fuji shooter. And if I can get 95% of the witchcraft level autofocus, if I can get the colors that I prefer, I'm not saying they're right, that I prefer, I get ISO noise at, you know, 6,400, 8,000, 10,000, that I don't think looks that bad. Um, I get great pet eye auto detection, um, just within a couple of points of the Sony. It's a natural move for me to go back to Sony. Um, but I guess for the purpose of this video, what I should say is that you really cannot go wrong with either of these. And I think they're priced pretty similar, similarly. Whoa, can't say that word. You know what? I will dive into a couple of just random things here. Um, EVF, and that's, you know, looking at not the LCD on the back. The LCD on the back is like, whatever, I don't use it that much. Um, the EVF of the Sony is embarrassing, like absolutely embarrassing. Let's see if I, this does the same thing. Ooh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Sony gets that right too in our ergonomics. The EVF of this, Sony makes like the best TVs in the world. What the? Put a good EVF in this thing. It's like 85 dots. It's like, I don't know. It's bad. It's like, I think my Z50 had a better EVF than this. And it doesn't matter if it's big, if it's like not crisp. The EVF of the Fuji is the best EVF I've ever seen. I've taken pictures with the Fuji, looked at them through the EVF and thought, oh, that's sharp. Brought them to the phone and I felt like they were not as sharp as what I looked at and that doesn't make any sense to me. Like what's going on? Ridiculous EVF, ridiculous. It's IMAX. This is 720p, you know, it's good HD, right? This is IMAX. That's the EVF. And that's experience, right? That's ergonomics. I mean, that should play in. I'm still not going to kick this guy out. Um, and another reason for that, what I was just noticing is when you're reviewing images, I want to sit here and I want to like, oh, well maybe I should, but like reviewing images, it lets me zoom and it doesn't really do that great, honestly. But the one thing it doesn't do is when I go to do this, it doesn't turn off the freaking screen, Fuji. I'm taking a shot. I've taken it like this. I've taken it like this. I now want to look at that image. Now I go like this. It's disappearing. This X100V has had enough of me. And I love you, X100V. I do. I love you, love you, love you for all that you are and all that you do. And I will always own one of you. But you're fired. Absolutely fired. This guy is taking over for you. And if it wasn't needed... So I'm going to close out. Um, hopefully that worked with the, um, the shutter sound comparison. And I just want to say that you absolutely cannot go wrong with either of these. They're both amazing, amazing cameras. I highly recommend the 24 to 105. It's literally an anchor lens. That lens made me think, am I going to find a Fuji lens for walk around, walk around the neighborhood, travel, just a, you know, some, some good range. Am I going to find a lens that can match it or beat it? Including the 16 to 55 and Fuji people will tell you, this is a bag of primes. No, it's not. No, no, it's really good, but it's not a bag of primes. It's not. The Sony 52.5, I think I said it before, I think it's an amazing lens, it's super light, you have your aperture ring, you've got a little button down here that you can set, to all kind of fun stuff, but the results from the 52.5, yes, you give up 1.4, you give up 1.8, you do. But for a lot of people, 
they don't need 1.4, especially enthusiasts, 1.4, 1.8. None of us need that creamy bokeh. Like I want my kid's eyes to be in focus and his ears. So 2.5 is perfect. 2.5 on a full frame, absolutely perfect. Very happy with it. Um, the 33 1.4 from Fuji, that lens is going nowhere. Amazing, amazing lens. Very happy with the result, very shocked. Um, it's a 1.4, but I mean like, I didn't want the, I think I had the 35 F2. Great lens, great, great, great lens. But when I bought this, I knew that if I kept this, I was selling a ton of Sony gear and I could cover the price of the 33 1.4. I honestly felt like it was the best lens to test up against the Sony. Um, I don't know that I'd say either one is better. Who cares at this point? I mean, you're not gonna use them on both. Both great lenses. So in summary, um, shocked that I was a Sony user for a while, absolutely shocked. And I will always have a place in my heart for the a7 IV. I want to keep it, but I can't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars with the camera gear. And like, you gotta have your body, right? You gotta have your main. So hope this video helped. If you have questions, hit me up, ask away. I try to respond to all comments. Even if you troll, thank you for your comment and time and interaction. Um, that's it. That's all I have. And I uh, hope this helps. Have a great day. Take care. All right, this is like B-roll here, but you may have noticed I said something about, um, I don't know if you call it the shutter um, click sound. So I'm gonna try to do that now. I'm here for you, full service. Even though it's Waffle House, scattered, smothered, and covered sometimes, we're gonna do this. Um, what I referenced in the kind of random note section was the shutter sound. And I'm just gonna close out with shutter sounds, why not? Close out after the close out. So we're gonna start with the Sony. And I describe the Sony as the law and order shutter sound. It's a, these are both done with the electric front curtain. So you're only gonna get, I guess, part of the shutter, the mechanical shutter. And so this clunk would be twice. It really would be clunk, clunk. but here we go. I'm gonna do it like here. I thought I was. All right, take 11. Let's see if this will work. Here we go. Let's get something focused. There we go. And then we'll do it from the side. So that's part of the shutter. You know what? Like, I'm like dying, dying to come in here and see if it'll do. How fast can I do this? Shutter mode settings. Here we go. I stand correct. Nope. Yep. E front curtain off. Now let's do both. Well, oh, that's really the sound. Oh my gosh, that's the sound. Okay, you've had that in your ears. Now let's go to the Fuji. We're gonna go start with electronic front curtain. I don't know if you heard that, but I took a picture, so we'll try here. That is with the electric front curtain. Then let's see if we can switch this to full mechanical, full mechanical ninja all right back to law and order <laughs> and for giggles we will turn the electric front cut electric front curtain thing I'm a jig back on she'll get the one pop I'm here for you. I'm here for you. We truly are going to close out with this. We're going to turn this back to electric front curtain shutter. I mean, I don't know how it comes across in the mic. I swear I listened to this on another take that was totally trashed, but it's like on a volume level, one to 10, this is a six and this is a three. Yeah, maybe a three and a seven. So, um, where could that make a difference? Um, the X100V is a perfect example. It's a leaf shutter in that you're able to take pictures without that acknowledgement that I took a picture. 
Um, I'll give you an example. My wife and I recently took an anniversary trip to Napa. We were down below of all the barrels. She's talking to the wine guy and they're in a discussion. I break out big ass honking camera already, right? I mean, I'd ask them in advance, hey, do you mind if I take some pictures? No, not at all, take whatever you want. They didn't know when I took pictures. I have pictures of them in full conversation. It wasn't like I took a picture and then they looked, right? I took multiple pictures and I don't know that they ever looked. So the X100V is the same way. I call it the Ninja Shutter. I can take just casual, candid pictures of uh, family, friends, and you don't interrupt the moment. So I th truly think this is the end. Um, we'll see if it moves you on to the next video, but I truly do appreciate your time. I hope all of this has helped. Ask any questions you like in any way that I can help. I'm glad to do so, and uh, have a good one. Take care, for real this time.